we've got dot five it says special vehicles we've got dot four synthetic we also have dot three high temperature synthetic there's all these different labeling gimmicks but you're dealing with pretty much the same type of things this is hydraulic clutch fluid and this is essentially the same thing as the dot three both of these are hygroscopic which means they absorb water all three of these including uh, dot 5.1 you know it's all kind of the same thing but they have different mixes if you use your MSDS sheets or material safety data sheets they'll tell you what the ingredients are they're all basically triethylene glycol mono butyl ethers that's a mouthful <laughs> uh, but what we're gonna do is we're going to show what happens if you mix different ones together basically this and this are exactly the same thing this is a better higher grade mix with a higher boiling point uh, than what this is all three of these absorb water hygroscopic just think the scope of it grows as you add water to it and then this one's just a whole different animal there's dot five and there's dot five point one the military asked for some type of a uh, non-hygroscopic uh, material something that was hydrophobic basically it wouldn't mix with water and this is what they got um, you'll find this in Harley Davidson motorcycles and stuff the nice thing about this is it doesn't absorb water the advantage of that is you can have an open container shelf life doesn't matter and that's kinda of what the army wanted is they wanted brake fluid that was just gonna work pretty much no matter what brake fluid you buy you'll find a little foil thing on the top and that's to keep the water from getting in it also helps keep things from spilling when they're transporting it look at this it'll have that same foil you always want to pour from a sealed container because like I say it'll absorb water out of the environment and this is the dot four correct it is so we're just going to pour some of this in there you'll notice that we came out purple on the dot five they want it to look very different basically they don't mix because this is kind of like an oil and this is a silicone when they say that it's wet when they're doing tests to check the performance I'm talking about the Department of Transportation they put about four percent water so we're just gonna put in just a little water and we're gonna stir it in and you'll watch that it's able to absorb that now that dramatically messes with its ability uh, in terms of boiling point but you see it mixes pretty well but look how well that mixed in now we're going to do the same thing in the silicone. The silicone is often used as a waterproofing agent. We'll just plop some of that in there. And you'll notice that it just goes straight to the bottom. So I'll get a new stir stick and I'll try to stir that up. Now if this is in your brake system, what basically what will happen is it will go to the bottom and corrode. Because that water that's in there is going to contaminate things, rust things, and create problems. So there's an advantage of being hygroscopic in that it'll spread out homogeneously. Basically it'll mix the same throughout. Now this is going to be a problem because if this is in the bottom of your caliper, uh, but air goes to the top of the system, water goes to the bottom, it's hard to get the water out. And the water creates all kinds of problems because the more water you add to either of these, the less they're able to perform under conditions of heat. So this is hydrophobic. Just imagine, you know, like arachnophobia, your girlfriend and spiders in a room. Basically, the bottom level is just going to be a mess because your girlfriend's going to be stomping all over the spiders or, you know, dancing. You know, it's just, it's bad news. On this, you don't see any water in the bottom of it because it's absorbed. There's advantages and disadvantages. The advantage is an awesome shelf life, a higher boiling point. Um, you don't have to worry about sealed container business. Uh, but then you have these kind of issues. So another nice thing about this over this is this is cheaper. Water spreads out in it. You can find it just about anywhere. Um, the disadvantages are it's corrosive. It eats paint. It irritates skin. Um, you don't want to get it in your eyes. The boiling point will drop over time. You can't get the water back out of it. I mean obviously you could separate this from the water and it's uh, doable. Um, and then this has a poor shelf life. It'll deteriorate over time as the seal's broken. Looking at it from above, you can't really see that the water's in there. It's important that if you have dot three, four, or 5.1, that you do change your brake fluid periodically. You want to change your brake fluid about every three to five years. 
if it's a dot three dot four dot five point one they're all made of the same kind of ingredients that's uh, glycol ether compounds so let's mix these together shall we so we're going to pour in that much dot four brake fluid and then we're going to follow up with some dot five and watch what happens it's basically going to explode and eat the whole glass you can quickly see which one's heavier can't you let's pour some more in let's be generous with this uh, abomination that we're doing here so we're going to go ahead and mix this up we're going to let it settle out and then we're going to add water to it you can see that these aren't compatible they don't mix with each other well at all it's kind of like lava lamp stuff isn't it but it's not absorbing into the dot five but it is absorbing into the dot four so you don't see it pooled separate like you see here but you do see that it's mixing with this down below and that's where that goes now interesting I've got purple streaks coming down it's kinda of like the water is pulling the dye out of the dot five and doing something with it that's my guess I've got a seal an o-ring basically in there they say if you mix these a bunch of wives tails online uh, they say that this will cause it to just eat the seals and have them expand and die so while we're waiting on that seal or in this case an o-ring to just com completely swell up and become obliterated immediately like everybody says on the forums why don't we take our dot three and our dot four and we'll pour them into this container and see what happens if you mix dot three and dot four shall we we'll pour it in there pour in the dot three and dot three is clear I don't know if you're seeing this you got clear you got straw color you know they try to make it like they're not the same and the additives can be different and that can affect the boiling point but the boiling point is only about 50 degrees different so when we mix these together I mean it's not even hazy anymore it's just the same and as I pull up on the syringe it's going to cause a low pressure area and as it's low pressure it'll pull the air out of it and you'll actually see it boil you see it boil right there see the bubbles come up you're going to agitate it a little bit you look in there you can see all those little bubbles coming out so you get a little bit of it push on it it disappears so you get a little squishy petal I guess they both kind of do the same I've just had more experience with getting the air out of that in the teeny tiny precise systems on a mountain bike. All right, well that O-ring has had a pretty good soak in there. And we're going to see what the dot five has done to it. Did I mention I found a bunch of O-rings on the road the other day? So maybe this is a really stupid one to do. Because it probably was dirty to begin with. And we're just going to wipe it on the paper towel in the same kind of fashion and there's not much difference between this one found on the road and that one carburetor cleaner I'm just going to let that sit on it for a minute hear it squeaking let's try mineral oil there we go that's what I'm looking to show you can see where it really ate into it so mineral oil will do that, toluene will do that, a lot of petroleum distillates will do that let's try mineral oil I've got some CHF 11S if you look at the ingredients on this it has all the same stuff that the MSDS sheet has on power steering fluid specifically solvent dewaxed heavy paralithinic so this is the kind of stuff that eats uh, seals and all kinds of stuff so let's put some of that on our o-ring and then wipe it I'm just gonna put it on about half of this so you see I've got it poured on there well, you can see that this is spread out, it's soaked a little bit. Let's see if we get some rubber transferring off of this. Like I say, we haven't been doing this a real long time, but you can see how much black's there. This stuff is bad for your seals. Of course, you have seals that are specifically made for that. So I was just messing around and I took the glass and poured the rest of the remainder of one just to get it, get it all together. And then you know when you're washing dishes and you push an empty glass down into the water, and it kind of holds 
this stuff acts really I mean this is basically what a shock does like a shock absorber but with a little better sealing and reservoir and whatnot but what's interesting is I was just gonna kinda ring the glass on it and it won't ring I try to knock it back and forth but it just kinda holds on to it what a mess I'm making <laughs> Science! Speaking of science, I've got some really amazing, amazing stuff that I wanted to show you guys on Wednesday. I was going to do it today, but it's too close to April Fool's Day. I, the more I thought about it, the more I decided to do this break video instead. Uh, but that video is its basically a product that I found. It's an oil additive, which I'm totally against because your additive package, I mean, like everything's set up in a ratio to make everything nice. But what if there's an additive that has its own ratio, its own package that makes your additive pack like just freaking insane. It's like steroids for your oil basically. My neighbor was telling me about this for the longest time and I wouldn't do anything to really pursue it because I was like, dude, those additives are all a bunch of crap. You know, I know about the lawsuits. I know about the short chain solvents. I know about... Uh, the CPs, you know, the chlorinated paraffins, and all the different tricks that people do to pass, the, you know, like the different tests for the four ball test or the one arm bandit or whatever. It's like I know all the tricks, and so I didn't want to have anything to do with it, but my neighbor got me to go check it out. I did the one arm bandit thing in person. I got to try a whole bunch of cool different things. Um, I did uh, Valvoline. I did Quaker State Defy, I did uh, a zinc dandruff shampoo, I did all these different things to just kind of feel it out for what's going on and then this additive just smoked everything by like a factor, I mean it's just like six times more effective than the rest of them or at least three times more effective than the rest of them in terms of load and friction all that kind of stuff it's pretty impressive and then I watched a bunch of oil analysis uh, basically the TAN you know the total that total acid number and the TBN the total base or TBC total base count total TBN total base number and it's just amazing 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 stuff it's, the thing that sucks is it's like seeing Bigfoot. You know, every, nobody believes in Bigfoot, and then you actually see him, and it's just, or an alien, or whatever the case may be, you know, that people view as being science fiction. Like, that's the way I felt about oil additives. But anyway, I'll be bringing that to you on Wednesday.